Now, it's barely over 6,600 pounds, but considering the fact that this is like 33 feet tip to tail, that is a true ultralight right there. Private bunk room, big super slide, and I am loving that beautiful new rich upscale interior. My name is Josh the RV Nerd. This is the Freedom Express 292 BHDS, and I think this might actually be the single most popular Coachman ultralight out there. There is so much demand for this one. Our biggest problem is that usually we're just always sold out. For good reason though. Start start checking the boxes, start making the list of features you want. You want a taller ceiling, central air, bigger air conditioner, carpetless, ventless flooring, easy for the family. You want good towing features like the, the weight reduction of Asdell in the sidewalls, and uh, combine that with the wide stance stability axles, you have something here that for a properly equipped half ton could very realistically be half ton towable. Now, you may feel a little more comfortable with a three quarter on this. It just really depends on personal preference, but the weights and the measures absolutely fall within the potential realm of tow package half ton towing. They've continued to push the envelope with these that when I first heard of that darker interior they were coming out, I was like, mm, I, I don't know guys. I don't know, dark can be scary, but they put so many light exits with it. Like the floor is light, the wall panels are very light. And the, the slide fascia on that table, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. I think it's the best looking Freedom Express we've seen yet. Um, they, they continue to do the little things right though. That's who these guys are really good at, uh, or what they're really good for. Like when we get to the back corner, all of the hookups are located all in the back corner closest to the park hookup point. It's just, it's a hundred little features. You look at this and you say, Somebody down there actually camps. That ain't just an engineer slapping this one together. That's what I love about these. And those little details that we give you, that's how I hope you subscribe here at Halid RV. And let's get inside here. And, and I tell you, when they went to this new decor, one of my big concerns with the darker wood tones is that it was going to start feeling small and oppressive in here. But it, to me, it doesn't. It doesn't feel anything like that. And I think there's a couple factors that are helping us. First of all, carpetless slide outs they make the floor look larger, especially when they do like uh, what Freedom Express did here. This is my preference. When the slide flooring matches the main flooring, you have to use a little bit better grade of flooring to accomplish that though. Secondly, we've got light color accents where we really need it. And I am just in love with the wood tone uh, on that slide fascia, the table. Little, little just accents like that help really break it up for me. There's become a lot of monochromatic looks in the RV industry lately. Uh, additionally, the RV has a taller ceiling, which of course I tell you about that as we're down here looking at the ventless carpetless flooring, but it's a six foot nine interior, which is pretty common in the world of stick and tin campers. But in the world of laminated ultralights, that's a very rare feature. And I tell you where I really like it. It's not just the fact that it's like nicer, taller kitchen cabinets. We have uh, taller bunks, but we have more headroom in the shower, which is something I look for. And I want to start down here because I don't know that in the past I've really given people a good look at how massive the space under the sink there is. And there's a reason for it. It's actually the reason that the countertop is slightly larger in a Freedom Express as well. It's actually slightly deeper. I'll show you that in just a second. First, I'm not doing my job if I don't acknowledge the Freedom Express utensil drawer. You have to say it like that. Otherwise, my rep said he would kill me. Okay. Um, also, that's maybe... He, he did say if I don't talk about the utensil drawer, he's going to kill me. But I came up with the funny superhero name for it. Anyway, a uh, couple things. Over here, this is an all-sealed edge pressed membrane countertop. And that, they've gone back to stone cast sinks instead of stainless, which I'm actually kind of glad to see. And we're seeing a split sink cover this year, which I know a lot of people like for just easier access points. That's a full wall backsplash back there. I would really love some kind of stovetop side splash. Um, but, you know, we, we can keep dreaming, right? But I was saying it's got a bigger, deeper countertop. Look at how much space exists behind the sink, behind the stove. It's almost a foot deeper. So some manufacturers will give you like a peninsula countertop or like a 45 degree bend countertop. Freedom Express just makes it bigger and deeper, which is more prep space and more uh, storage space below it. Now the taller ceiling means uh, about three inch taller doors up here and storage as well. Now I personally like it when a manufacturer uh, puts a shelf in a tall cabinet space like this, but I also respect the fact that they gave me the choice and the option. Adding a shelf to something isn't difficult. Um, now real quick side note while I'm looking at this, sorry, <laughs> saw something shiny. 
The RV is definitely lacking in door side windows. When you're sitting on the sofa, you've got a couple here straight across from you. It's better than nothing. It's certainly not big panoramic windows. And I guess while I'm sitting down, look under the overhead cabinet if you're looking for those household outlets because they're it's it's dark on dark it's easy to miss the rv is not exactly level right now so of course that freezer door would close itself on us uh might as well talk about that now standard and freedom express ultralight that we're in is an eight cubic foot gas electric fridge freezer uh this model also uh available in liberty edition by the way uh not a lot changes anymore though that's why we're, we've been actually bringing in a lot more of the ultras versus the uh liberties here at halid rv but in both cases you have the option for that faster cooling and travel safe dc compressor fridge which is uh something of which i've really become a big fan Getting that fridge door out of the way so we can see it. Your pantry's over there. It's easy to miss because it's not like necessarily directly in the kitchen space. We do have access to the storage on the side benches, but that's just that that's just the appetizer. Check this out. I love this. And I mean I love it! Uh, it's the simplest thing, but oh my lord, as somebody who camps, I see this, I'm like, yes, thank you. First of all, the table free floats. You can just straight get it out of the way. But secondly, down here you can see that they give us sliding panel access to the storage on the rear bench. And again, totally carpetless. Those right there to me, those are some absolutely awesome features that so many manufacturers, I think really dropped the ball on. And Freedom Express is, it seems like one of the, uh, a slimming number of brands that still gives us cabinets above the sofa. How about that? But then you see that with the optional hide bed you can fit a couple uh, like bigger people in here. And this is a, a big extended super slide that has like an extra large U dinette also that can fit a couple people, plus the bunks in the back, plus the master bed. This can sleep a ton of people. Actually, hey, hey phone, how many people can this camper sleep? Check this out. How about you look it up yourself? Seriously, you're a big boy. Learn to Google something like a regular person. This is why nobody likes you. Just grow up. Oh Even though I am a touch screen, you really know how to push my buttons. Um, kids, Aunt Siri's gonna have to go lay down for a while, I think. <coughs> uh, sorry about that. I, I think Siri is just, uh, I, I think she's just still a little worked up after an unexpected visit from her motherboard in law, but never mind that. Little details, little details make big differences, like the fact that the bathroom door actually locks. Looking at how much space there is around the porcelain foot flush stool. Definitely more room on the uh, the left side than the right. Definitely, definitely, yes, Charlie Babbitt. It's, it's okay on the right side if you're a right-hander and you gotta clean up and take care of business. There's enough room, and I know that maybe that's not the prettiest thing to talk about, but I think that's an important factor. You gotta know that you can get in here and actually do your business. And speaking of doing business, if you're doing showering business, if you're 6'3 or shorter, you're going to fit in that thing just fine without your head in the sky, like maybe slightly larger even. Um, now, those little shelves in the corner are not really even good for shower beer, so just kind of keep that in mind. I learned that one the hard way. Rest in peace, Coors Light. But <laughs> a tub. A lot of bunkhouses have gone to showers. Some people still like tubs. I think the tub's a really effective way of keeping the shower curtain from eating you alive. Oh, oh, the bunk room. It's small, it's simple, but I really like a, a recent update here. The windows beside the bunks, first of all, all the windows up here open for airflow. They're 300 pound rated, handy little USB plugs now that we got all that done. The snap-on straight blackout window shades they have on those, that is cool. Because like on the back here, where there's they're less likely to get smashed up, you still have pleated pull down shades, uh, like on either side of the uh, the bunk room entertainment center right there. Oh, I love that brown color. Oh, that looks good in, uh, by contrast. But I can't tell you how many used bunk houses I have been in where the windows beside the bed are just shredded wheat from kids rolling over at night and just kicking the bejeebies out of them. By the way, over here on the right-hand side, there are some household outlets down there. See, handy little shoe garage. Kind of a little, I don't know, open air. Don't know if you're going to make that toy space, dresser space. What would you use that for? Plus a good, good amount of storage right here in the middle. Now, it's not hanging space, but I think most parents will agree. Shelf space in a bunk room is far more useful and important than hanging space. That being said... Probably wouldn't be hard to take out that top shelf and make a, a little mini hanger there if you needed it. 
Now, as they roll out of there, I think we've mostly handled the uh, the living room pretty well. I do want to point out how all the windows in that slide, especially the, the slide side windows, open for some good airflow here. Give you just a quick look around everything. Um, the air conditioner standard is a 13,500 BTU. That being said, we really, uh, pretty much 100 times out of 100, will upgrade that to a, uh, a larger 15,000 BTU unit. Uh, down here, you've got the uh, little shoe garage, little open air shoe garage. And take a look at this. Not only do you have sliding pocket privacy doors, but the entire entertainment center now finally turns around. In the past, the TV turned into the bedroom, but the little stereo unit did not. That is something that the little apexes, uh, the, the little miniature brother sisters of the Freedom Express have done for a while. And I'm really glad to see them adopt that here. I also, I really like just the, the nicer touch feel, just the, the solid stuff on their window treatments there. Now you might notice You've got household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. I do want to make a point to mention that because, again, they can be a little difficult to see. And very critical, I think, deal maker breaker factor right here. When you see a bed come up close to the entertainment center like that, sometimes you get nervous. The good news, this is a 60 by 80 true queen, so you're not going to have to be too awful nervous. You got the vent up top there. It is just a vent. It is not hard to upgrade that to uh, like a, a power vent fan. And you see how you've got the full hanging closets on both sides. You've got the full shelf overhead. But folks, that is just, we're again, it's, it's like the dinette. We are only just getting started here. Because sort of like a Murphy bed, this entire bed flips up out of the way with the help of those gas struts and leaves this just wide open vaulted kind of space right here. Now it's open in the middle, which I think would be very handy for things like totes or maybe a little dog bed or, or maybe a cat litter box, something like that. And both of these side stands have a couple other additional awesome features. They both have a large dresser drawer that opens outward. Like this setup that we're looking at was originally pioneered by the, the cousin to the Freedom Express, the Coachman Spirit. Um, it was uh, originally kind of an offshoot of Freedom Express that sort of developed its own thing. I think Freedom Express kind of refined it a little bit by making the storage open outward. I kind of prefer that myself, but it's got another cool little thing going on here. There's wide open little pockets, um, like pass-throughs under those. The trick is they're not at a spot where I can really show you that on camera. Ooh, I got an idea. <laughs> Watch this. So there's the old Adatus. Now let me see if I can frame this up and nail this all in one real-time shot. Sorry, we're doing this live. I've never done this before. Yes! Look at that. You see how you've got like, whether it's shoe garages or again, if you want to put little sliding totes down there, there's just, there's a bunch of cool little ways you can use these and they are like seat weight rated. So another little idea I had is that you got a big family, like on a rainy day, it's nice that you have the private space in the back. It's not a slide out bunk room though. So everybody can sometimes get a little testy. He's touching me, she's touching me, don't touch myself. Not that that ever happened in my household growing up or anything, but that's part of the reason maybe we're a one-and-done household. I love my daughter, but she's enough. <laughs> but you, this could be, like, this could be a little mini playroom for the kids, you know? Kids let play shop and all kinds of games. Let their imagination run wild in here. I'd, I'd definitely find a way to lose some Legos under this. Not to mention, you could be playing Shrek or something up here just to keep them occupied a little bit while you're in the living room. And again, even at night, this flips around, you can actually use remote controls to control this stuff. It always used to be you had to open the doors and go out in the living room and then click, clack, push the buttons. You just don't have to do any more of that now. It's just simpler and easier. Now, I always like to uh, close the slides up, show you how things are going to work in road mode. And I think it's really critical on this floor plan because I think this could be a make or break point for some people. What you see here is that with, with this floor plan, and this is common of most manufacturers of this layout, when the slide's closed, man, you just, you lose really the bunkhouse and the bathroom. You do have access though to the refrigerator, uh, the bulk of the kitchen space. So it's not bad for a travel stop, but if you're going to have an overnight stay over, you're definitely going to want to find some place where you can park in the middle of the parking lot to uh, deploy the slide out and get back there. And outside here, we're going to start up front, but I want to hit on a couple things that are easily overlooked, like the battery disconnect switch, and it's a little unconventional, but the tongue-mounted spare tire right there below the uh, dual battery capable battery rack. 
uh, battery rack. There we go. Now we include your first battery from Halid RV at no additional charge. That's part of our no fees uh, program that we have here at Halid. So we make sure when this RV leaves, it has all the bare necessities you're going to need to go camping. You just might want to get some applesauce and some mac and cheese to get yourself going. Now it's it's really actually interesting how many of the Liberty Edition Freedom Express features these ultralights have absorbed over the years, and I'm not disappointed about it, frankly. Pound for pound, dollar for dollar, it is my personal belief the Freedom Express Ultralight is one of the best crafted, best appointed lightweight trailers out there. I know that's a big statement, but there's reasons I say it. Like, it's all those little placement features, you know? Now, this has Freedom Express, really. I mean, like, you know, they're taller inside. They have that nice deep slide. They were one of the first true ultralights to give us the bigger space and feels that normally a non-ultralight had. They just started using things like Asdel to make it lighter. Now that little sticker that's half peeling over there, it's kind of designed not to stick too hard so it doesn't rip up your wallpaper. That is where a charge controller could go if you add a, char uh, a solar package or get the factory installed one. Now you see those brackets up top uh, in the, the aluminum frame pass-through right there? That is actually a, uh, a little holder slot for the portable picnic table that we're going to see uh, back by that camp kitchen. You can actually see it right there a little bit. It's, it's nice that they, first of all, include a picnic table because not every campsite has one. And from some of the pictures some of my viewers have been sharing lately, I'm not sure I necessarily want to use the picnic tables at campgrounds anymore at the, I mean, I've always brought like a picnic table cover with me, but I'm, I'm happier now than ever that I've always done that. Now this has a good size power awning on it. You see there's, it's got awning lighting plus just to the right of that right hand speaker, there's an extra little outside floodlight. So you can really light up your campsite if you want. And that actually overlooks the TV hookups. And then over here, this is an interesting thing. So if you're looking over there, you see that um, outside griddle and little table next to it. Uh, that's that's something like Rockwood had been doing, the Freedom Express went, you know what, I really like that. Let's start doing that ourselves, you know? Gotta just give credit where it's due a little bit. But in the past, they had a Coleman camp grill and that could actually uh, slide in and out of some of these uh, little drawers right here. And they said, you know, we already have the space below the refrigerator. That's the square door, by the way, the access panel to the 12 volt fridge. Why don't we just make it storage? And I love that. I love that they didn't just waste anything. They're very good about that here. Now I touched on it early in the video, but this is 33 feet and change in terms of length. It's just slightly over 33 feet tip to tail. That's fairly long for a lot of half ton towing. The weight is certainly within half ton tow ability. Those wide stance axles though will really help you do what I call cheating the wheelbase. It will make the RV feel and tow like it's a little bit shorter, which is why I still feel this is potentially half ton towable, assuming the truck has the right credentials. There's gonna be some half tons this just doesn't work for, keep that in mind. And that table you can use anywhere. You could use it inside for dyno for days. You know, if it's raining outside, you can't use it out here. But I think when you're out here, when you're cooking, when you're grilling, when you're uh, utilizing this camp kitchen, and this is a really well done camp kitchen, I think. You got the bigger fridge, but I like how they actually level drop it down from the countertop so that uh, what, what you do here is you keep inside of dad's medicine cabinet, you keep the barley water here, you keep the bottled water here, and you keep the hug juice barrels there, and you keep the cold curs light right over here. That's what you do now. Well, I don't know, at least how I'd use it. <laughs> That is a real sink, by the way. It's not the dog dish that you just dribble on the ground. And look at this, just like we saw inside. Number two, utensil drawer. And just like inside, this is completely removable. I don't know if I mentioned that. So if you wanna take that out, set it on the picnic table for serving time, it's a really handy, cool little thing. If there's one little criticism I'm going to offer over here, it's that this little side table it does not have an under support. So it's really, it's only good for very light weight. If you want to put something heavy on top of it, then you're going to want to add like a little support leg. Like for instance, if you put this griddle on top of that, it would probably fall off of there. I just want to give you a, a proactive heads up. I'd rather you do that ahead of time. I'd rather you carefully experiment with that rather than be on your campsite and accidentally break something and kind of, I don't, I don't want you to taint your whole trip like that, you know? It just taint something I want for you. <laughs>
And a quick credit to Freedom Express for continuing to offer roof access ladders, uh, which have become kind of hard to come by in the current market conditions. Ladder suppliers have been running short, so a lot of manufacturers have said, eh, we're just not going to worry about it, so we don't got to deal with it. I really appreciate the fact that Freedom Express has continued to find ways to make sure that they have what I feel are fully equipped trailers, you know. Uh, she's backup camera ready. We're going to get up on that walkable roof in a minute. New reverse travel lighting on here. Well, we first saw that kind of come into the Jayco's with their J-Smart lighting. Then a lot of companies like Keystone said, well, we can incorporate the backup lighting real easy. Well, I, I'd, I'd rather see more people do that. Like, it, it's not the full, like, Jayco's uh, turn signal lighting package, but it's at least something. Something's better than nothing. Over here, we've got our uh, black tank flush. That's the uh, top hookup on the left over there. Full outside utility shower, cable and satellite hookups, and then check this out. So years past, before this uh, had a full camp kitchen, that was actually a second full pass-through below the storage in the bunk room. But I think that right there makes for the perfect place to keep your little totes and stuff for the stinky slinky uh, sewer station so that you don't have to mix those with your campsite stuff in the front area. Or you just use this for like the kids stuff or something, or you, I don't know, you stuff the kids in there, play a game, I'm not sure. And it's the little things, it's the little things. So it's a flip up magnet holdback, right? Yes, but more, it's a locking magnet holdback. It actually has to be there, uh, like this little pin here. It actually has to be released which I think is very cool. So it doesn't fall on your head. I don't know if you've ever had that happen. I certainly have. It sucks. It's not fun. <laughs> now, you don't see where these are slide awning prepped like a lot of brands are, but that slide awning prep, in truth, there's really not a whole lot to it. You can definitely put slide awnings out of Freedom Express if you're curious. And while we're talking about the slides, let's get right over here. First of all, all the windows are tinted. You can see they all open for airflow. And then the skin on the slide wall very rough textured because it'll do a better job of grabbing double wiper seals both of which are actually uh, a little t shaped seal which will give all of these things combined basically to be to give better grip on these so they properly wipe in and out plus on the inside and outside there's a bulb seal to give you three points of contact which i think is very very cool and then we get down here take a little bit of a knee we've got an enclosed forced air heated underbelly and they're using uh, something like Montana Luxury Fifth Wheels uses. It's like a little miniature thermal pocketed underbelly enclosure. It just holds heat slightly better than a common like fluted polypropylene, which is what most like uh, plastic cardboard looking stuff, corrugated underbelly plastic stuff. It just holds heat a little bit better. And a couple things for you real quick up here on the roof. First of all, the fact that it is fully walkable. This is a snow load rated roof, which in the Midwest, some of our Northern friends up in Canada may be kind of an important factor for you. Uh, additionally, that uh, that plug all the way back there, uh, it, well, hold on, I'm in, I'm in reverse footage mode here. Almost got it, there we go. I'm telling you, the weatherman's got it hard. I keep trying to get better at this. I don't know if I'd have made it as a meteorologist. <laughs> but that plug back there is uh, a solar prep plug. And this has a 175 watt factory solar option if you are interested. It comes with a 30 amp charge controller, which I don't think you're gonna run out of real estate up here before you overload that charge controller, but it's gonna come close. You could add a lot of extra solar on this if you just start adding all those things together. Now, I've covered a lot here. I mean, and there's there's so much I haven't touched on. I, I can't necessarily cover every single nut, bolt, widget, and whiz bang every time in every one of these videos, but I hope this has given you a good reasonable idea of where this RV excels, maybe like the travel access, where it's a little bit limited, but also the good things like that true queen bed and the amazing storage that's down there. Those extra details we give you here at Halet RV. We hope to be able to earn your business with these kind of things when you're ready, or at very least, hit the subscribe button. Maybe we earn ourselves another follower. And uh, if, if there's something you see on this that you like, let me know what you think about the new decor, for instance. Or like, would you want the factory solar package on this for a couple hundred bucks? Would you upgrade it or would you rather build your own? Would really like to know things like that. So from everybody here at Halet RV, we thank you very much. We're family owned and operated. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone.